Are you looking for sealed product and singles? You can find it all on Channel Fireball. Please use my Tailmon affiliate code when checking out to help support my content. Looking for PTGO codes? Photon Store has all the latest sets and promos instantly delivered to your email. You can use Tailmon code when checking out for 5% off. If you're from Europe, Millipods Gaming has a wide array of sealed products, singles and more. You can use Tailmon code when checking out for 5% off. Hello everyone and welcome to another Table 1 video. Now today as you are just like immediately looking at the setup, this is going to be a very different video from our usual uh, PTCGO grinding. Yeah. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are aware that Pokemon collecting and older cards are being like super hyped up. They're being very talked about and um it's a big it's a big topic right now in the community like older cards and how much they're worth and whatnot so i myself i'm not particularly a collector um like when i was younger when i was a teenager i did like um getting some cards like my favorite pokemon or whatnot but eventually i just gave up on that and i purely focused on the competitive aspect um, which is what I'm sure most of you know me uh, for um, as of today. But what I always did like having though was this like nostalgia. I, I like, I'm a very like nostalgic person in the sense that I cherish a lot of the things that I, that I owned or that I played with or that I experienced from my childhood all the way up to my adulthood. And part of that is Pokemon cards, right? I've been playing for almost 20 years now competitively and I have this sort of like older decks collection, right? Which goes beyond just buying the, the world decks every year um, that they come out. This actually contains like decks that either I played at the world championships myself or that I enjoyed using during a season or that had like that I had uh, decent results with. So I wanted to showcase a bit of my vintage uh, collection deck and I wanted to show like as of right now or as of um, for a while now, I've just had them stored in like all these uh, deck boxes, right? This is the World's 2013 deck box. This is World's 2006. This is um, League like EX Crystal Guardians. So it's like, it's a really old deck box. And um, yeah, I wanted to show you guys the sort of uh, decks that I own and my new system that I'm working with, thanks to Ultimate Guard, which is a sponsor of the channel. I'm working on a new system of storage to better uh, keep my cards um, fresh and clean and well protected and also organized, right? So, as you can see right here, this is um, a Gardevoir deck. Um, apparently, I've always been a big fan of Gardevoir, right? And you can see right here, um, I have them in like the respective sleeves and everything's shiny. And there's even Japanese cards, which we were allowed to play with back then. And there's the Dawn Spars, there's even this like completely you can't see it on the on the camera it's not focusing but this is like a super creased dumb spars that i used to own when i was a teenager and you have reverse holo oracles and like really good condition and i'm gonna show these um in a bit and i just wanted to show all right sorry about that uh small cut it's just someone was at the door and I had to uh pick a package up but you can see like even the ex emerald energies are here um i have like a very significant collection of these like look at these beautiful energies okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna de-sleeve these uh these sleeves because they're like pretty generic and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put all of these um decks yeah i'm gonna first de-sleeve all of this and I'm gonna show you the decks in detail. And then what I will be doing is in this new, uh, 
process of presenting. And you can see a Blaziken deck and then the Worlds. To the, this is my 2004 collection, right? And I'll go over like even the nostalgia part of, of the decks. I'm gonna be protecting these in the Ultimate Guard Katana sleeves. They're um, the best sleeves in terms of protection. And also because at some point I am going to want to uh, play with these decks, with my friends, just get together, crack out the old decks, and it's, it doesn't really want to focus. Um, but I'm sure you're familiar with the Katana sleeves. I've been working with Ultimate Guard for a while, and these sleeves are just like incredible, incredible quality, and uh, they really help conserve the cards well. And then I'm going to be placing each deck in a bolder deck box uh, to further protect the cards, which um, like. I'm sure if someone does the maths on how much just these four decks are worth, you'll see that it's definitely they're definitely worth protecting. And then since I do have four decks of every year, I will be saving each deck um, each year in their own personalized Smart Hive. Yeah, the Smart Hive is the brand new product from Ultimate Guard. It allows you to fit up to four different uh, deck boxes inside. So each Smart Hive will contain a year of these vintage decks collection that I have. Really looking forward to opening up this. So I'm gonna start with that, yeah. And then probably have to do another cut because I don't think you wanna see uh, 15 minutes of me desleaving. <laughs> 15 minutes of me desleaving cards, but you do want to see um, the decks. But first we're gonna do, whoops. That almost fell. We do this sort of unboxing of the Smart Hive, which also took its sweet time arriving. So I'm really happy it's finally here. I really wanted to make this video for a while now. Look, just look at this beautiful box. It's like super sturdy. Um, I have a bunch of archives here. I have another. Um, Another smart hive, but this new 400 plus is like, it's literally perfect for um, just like, oh, I want to travel to a tournament and I want to bring some older decks with me to play with my friends. Well, just take a look at this. Yeah, it unfolds. You even get like a sort of playmat ish if you want to. Uh, comes with a beautiful thank you note from Ultimate Guard, the silica packet to make sure that everything's clean and dry. I have space to keep dice and everything, die and everything and damage counters or whatever I need uh, to play with. And then we have this space, right? Right here, one, two, three, four, right? The four boulders, the four boulders fit perfectly. These are actually the 80 plus. So um, eventually I'll probably have to switch them to the 100 plus so that they fit in a little more snugly and tight. But um, yeah, this is like, I plan on having a 2004 archive, a smart hive, sorry, a 2005, a 2006, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so that is this. It's like, it's, it looks so clean, so nice. The logo right there, uh, super sturdy. Like I know with time these like all the cards the older cards they they're valuable because of what they mean to me and they're valuable because of what like the value the market price that is placed upon them right so i'm really looking forward to to conserving everything nice and clean so i will be back with the deck showcase right now all right so that took way longer than i thought it would uh, those leaves were definitely not ideal and it took so long. Uh, like my pet peeve with po playing Pokemon cards is I really just do not enjoy sleeving and re-sleeving and de-sleeving. I just, I, I wish there was a way to do that automatically. <laughs> That's the one thing I do not miss about playing in real life. Um, but yeah, you can see we have the four different decks. We have the Team Magma uh, World Champion deck list. This is the Blaziken deck that I used to win the first ever Mexico National Championship. 
Um, so it's like very significant for me. And then this is the Guard of War deck from that era. I'm not sure if it's like the highest placing list or what. I honestly don't remember where it is from. And this is the deck that I ended up using at the World Championship. It was a rogue deck at the time. It had a terrible Magma matchup. I actually lost to the World Champion in round four of the tournament. I played against Chugoshi Yamato and he destroyed me because my deck was horribly weak to um, Team Magnus Groudon. And yeah, I guess I guess we can start with that one. Yeah, that's probably the one that no one's uh, ever heard of. One of my friends did make top 32 at the tournament with our list. Um, I was working with the same group where we ended up getting um, first place and third place at the World Championship the year after. And I'm gonna be placing all of these awesome cards into the new catastrophes wow yeah this feels like completely completely uh different i'll try and make sure that you can look um this deck was a lantern deck it's just i'm doing everything upside down and it's not really like comfortable um so i guess i'll just do it like how how i should be uh jeez so yeah, this deck featured Lantern, which a lot of you might actually recognize this Lantern. This Lantern came out, again, it was reprinted in the Celestial Storm set, I believe, uh, with the same ability. It did more damage. Come on, camera, focus on the card. There we go. Energy grounding. It focuses for like a second and it stops focusing. There we go. There you can see a little bit. Ugh. Anyways, um, you'll see that there's a lot of shiny cards here. There's actually very few cards that are not fully shiny. Um, but yeah, this deck, the idea behind it was like an anti-meta game deck. The energy grounding ability allowed you to absorb lightning energy attached to your Pokemon when someone was knocked out. Uh, you dealt 50 base damage. If you discarded all the lightning energy, you dealt 90, which at the time 90 was actually a really high number to be hitting. And we played Strength Charm in order to make sure we we're hitting 100, and that meant we could KO Gardevoirs, we could KO Blazikens, we could even KO Magmas uh, Ground. You know? Then it also featured this Medicham. Yeah, this Medicham has two attacks. It's gonna be hard for it to focus, I guess. Um, geez. You can see the really nice reverse foil pattern. Um, okay, um, this Medicham, yeah, I'll put it on screen, has the Meditate attack doing 20 damage plus 10 more for each damage counter on the Infinity Pokemon. So the more you attack them, the more damage you dealt. And Chakra Points did 10 damage plus 10 more damage for each card in your opponent's hand. Now, back then, we had the Delcaddy Oracle and Delcaddy Magneton engines running rampant. And I played a few games, actually, of this format not too long ago, and you end up with, like, 10-plus card hands every turn. So that Medicham was a way to punish that. And then we had the Banet, yeah. The Banet with a Shadow Steel attack did 10 damage plus 20 more for each special energy card on your opponent's discard ball. That was actually pretty significant. There were a lot of special energies going around. And the Darkness Chant also did a um, good amount of damage to the opponent's active Pokémon for each Pokémon basic or evolution in your discard pile. Now, Dunspar Strike and Run discard was also reprinted, although it never saw play. The Strike and Run attack was really, really cool and really fun to use for sure. Um, it allowed you to set up games were much slower than they currently are. They lasted for way more than the four turns that they currently do. And you would even get into sudden flash wars uh, with Dunsparce against Dunsparce to just paralyze or even sacrificing your Dunsparce and, and using those turns to fully set up was actually pretty common. Now we're going into the trainers. We have the Steven's Advice, essentially Erika's Hospitality, right? You draw cards wherever you draw a card for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. And if you have more than, uh, if you had seven cards in your hand, you could not play the card. Less restrictive than Erika's Hospitality for sure. Next, we have the Oracle. This card is probably worth quite a good amount of money um, individually, and I have four of them right here. Um, this card allows you to choose any two cards from your deck and put them at the top of your deck in any order you want. 
So you combine that with a Dell Cadiora future supporter and then you get what you need when you need it. And it was actually a pretty popular card. Yeah, it was really hard to get these reverse foil. Like it was really hard to get just regularly and then it was really hard to get reverse foil. Now, for those of you who are very knowledgeable, you'll know that this dragon, this TV reporter is actually not from the 2004 era. These are like from the future. And when I built this text, I was very like obsessed with having everything era correct and also foil. But the, there was a problem with the printing of the set of T Reporter and the specifically the T Reporter verse foil was actually extremely hard to find. Something crazy like one out of a hundred boxes. Yeah, so they're super expensive and um, they're even more expensive now because they're so rare. Right, uh, you will see them in a future video though. I do own quite a few copies of them, but uh, just getting the extra extra copies was just way too much. What I'll probably end up doing at some point is replacing these foil, uh, foil versions with the correct era non foil ones. So, uh, Pokemon Catcher essentially Pokemon reversal but this is Pokemon catcher you flip a coin if heads you choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and you put it as the active Pokemon so a lot of you are familiar with that there were no boss there were no supporters that did that because the effect is so powerful right so it came down to the coin flips and not very many decks played such an effect I'm pretty sure this was like pretty novelty for us to be using it Here's the Strength Charm, this is essentially Vitality Band, you do 10 damage, but it's only a one-time use, right? After you have attacked, you lose the Strength Charm, so it's actually worse than a Vitality Band. Uh, but the plus 10 was pretty significant, so much so that I have three of them in the deck. And then we have Desert Ruins, the equivalent to Shrine of Punishments. If your opponent has a Pokemon EX that has 100 HP or more, or any player rather, then they get 10 damage in between turns, and you have to realize that Pokemon EXs back then had 150 HP, right? Not uh, 200 or more. So 10 damage was actually way more significant. And then Magnetic Storm removes resistance from fighting and uh, removes resistance to fighting and psychic Pokemon. And then the TM Rock actually devolves everything on your front side of the field. So you could do like a few small attacks and then devolve and then take multiple prizes in one turn or you could use that to nullify the use of rare candy which was very common in blaze again and gardevoir decks along with swamp bird and shift tree and um then they were wasted right they were wasted now look at these beautiful energies the matrix energy this came out in 2004 in the ex emerald set they're so beautiful these might actually not be era correct yeah, EX Emerald came out in 2005, this is 2004, but these are so beautiful and I love them so much and I don't know, they looked so cool and that's why I chose to use them. Um, we're about to get to a card that if that card existed in today's metagame, it might actually make stage 2 Pokemon and evolution decks a lot more valuable, I mean viable, not valuable, viable than they currently are. So let me get the extra sleeves that I need. So this is one thing that is going to be a little unfortunate. I will have a lot of spare sleeves for each deck, but since I'm not going to be playing them, I'm not going to be breaking like 40 extra sleeves for each deck is definitely way too much. So I might end up combining some of them, even though like these are not for tournament play. So I feel like I feel like I'm okay combining some extra extra katana sleeves here and there. So these are the fighting energies. Just take a look. Yeah, they're they're so cool looking. I feel like Pokemon has never released uh, energy as cool looking as these Matrix energy, and they're called Matrix energy because the background obviously looks like sort of the Matrix kind of pattern. Um, which was a, a very revolutionizing movie way back when, right? And there it is. Yeah, there it is. The double rainbow energy, okay? Imagine how good, or you know how good Aurora energy is right now. This card provided two of any energy. It could only be attached to evolved Pokemon. And all the damage you dealt with this energy was reduced by 10. But... In today's day and age, reducing by 10 is really not impactful, right, for the most part. And having the double rainbow energy effect, oof, 
that would allow a lot of tech to be viable, I feel. Um, all right, so you can see uh, now this feels way, way nicer, way, way nicer than with the other sleeves. And we have this absolutely, I'm gonna do it like this so you guys can see all the cards again. Look at this, I like, this brings so many good memories. The first world championship by Pokemon 2004, Orlando, Florida. I was um, 16 years old at the time and I'm currently 32. So that was literally half my age ago. Yeah, half of my lifetime ago, probably more longer, like probably longer ago than some of you who are watching this video, like you were probably not alive back then. You know, so my first ever world deck, I was the first Mexican player to qualify to a Pokemon World Championship. I was the first Mexican national champion, even though the tournament wasn't called the national championship, it was essentially the national championship because there was only one tournament to send a representative to the world championship from Mexico. So now, I think, okay, so there's 100, that means there's 50, 40 sleeves here, right? So I'm gonna open another pack and then sleeve this deck. And then I'll combine the, the leftovers from those two packs and I will go ahead and, um, I will go ahead and save up on some sleeves. Yeah, no need to be wasteful and these are, uh, not for a tournament play or anything, so it's okay to combine sleeves from two packs. If you are going to be playing a tournament though, you definitely do not want to do that because then you might run into trouble for marked sleeves. So don't do good things that might look bad. Yeah. Alrighty. So we have this very cool looking Ralts. Getting these cards shiny was also like, required a decent investment at the time. I probably started working on these back in 2012, I believe. So the cards were eight years old by then. And now these cards are so old and a lot of them are actually pretty, like pretty well taken care of. This one, like this curly is actually not in pretty good quality. I feel like if I actually took the trouble to grade, especially some of the trainers, um, some of these cards and stuff, there's a lot of value in these, like just because of how much Pokemon collecting has gone up these past few years. But as of today, you know, the sentimental value that these cards hold is way higher for me. Now this Gardevoir was pretty cool. Um, Gardevoir has always featured as a powerful Pokemon in the Pokemon trading card game. And why won't it focus though? I don't understand how cameras worked apparently. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Psy Shadow, I figured it out. Psy Shadow allowed you to attach a psychic energy from your deck to a Pokemon. You put two damage counters on that Pokemon and then energy burst does 10 damage times the total amount of energy attached to Gardevoir and the opponent's Pokemon. So remember Gardevoir GX, this is the light version. <laughs> this is the light version of Gardevoir GX. Um, pretty cool card for sure. And it was a pretty popular archetype, yeah? And then you had the Gardevoir EX with the attack feedback. You would count the number of cards in your opponent's hand and then put that many damage counters on the defending Pokemon. Uh, uh, uh. And then Psystorm dealt 10 damage for every energy attached to all Pokemon in play, both yours and your opponent. And You'll see that this deck played essentially, like, you know, triple acceleration energy. Well, there used to be an energy called boost energy, which was exactly that. Yeah, it's actually right here. Yeah, this is essentially the same triple acceleration energy. <clears throat> Can only be attached to evolve Pokemon, counts for three energy, and it gets discarded at the end of the turn. So that concept has existed since 2004. <clears throat> now, Magneton, pretty cool card. You discard a card from your hand and you get two basic energy back into your hand, right? So that allowed you to get more energy into play, get energy attachments and recover um, energy from your knocked out Pokemon. But also the magnetic force attack does 10 damage for every energy attached to your Pokemon. All right, so Magneton actually could be a pretty decent attacker. 
And now this Delcadi is Japanese, but I'll leave the English uh, version right there. Um, on screen, the ability allowed you to discard a basic energy and then you would draw three cards. This is what I meant with the Delcadi engine that I mentioned earlier. Hands would get so big because there's no limit. So this is the OG Zorak GX. Uh, this is the OG trade. This is the real deal. <laughs> they had to balance this by giving you one less card. And then the good old Dunsparce, you'll see that um, there's four Dunsparce in this deck and this deck and in this deck. That's how crucial it was. And I will say once again, they are all foil. But look, this one is like, it's super, super creased. Yeah, I can you see the crease right there. Very noticeable. Yeah, super shiny. <laughs> the old reverse hollow was super, super shiny. Um, yeah, more oracles to stockpile our top decks. Preview, like this oracle is super pristine. It's, it's actually crazy how well conserved this card is after 16 years. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the idea behind this deck was get a lot of energy into play and do a lot of damage because of that. And like right now, doing 100 damage doesn't, like 10 energy meant 100 damage. Can you imagine right now if you needed 10 energy to do 100 damage, that card would be completely unviable, right? With 10 energy, you'd be expecting to be dealing 400 damage at least or some, some, some crazy number. Uh, now you deal 100 damage for a single energy essentially this is judge yeah desert chairman the og judge both players shuffle and draw cards draw four cards sorry so the og judge right here we have more erica's hospitality and then the professor elms that you saw there um that's essentially evolution instance but as a supporter i love the artwork i love how total out is chewing on professor elms hand and this is evolution, the OG evolution incense, except it was so good back then to search for Delcadi, to search for Magneton, that they had to balance it out by making it a supporter. But since they weakened evolutions later on, now it's no longer needed to balance. And then the OG Pokemon catcher, once again, different dark work than on this deck. We have the rare candy. Rare candy, a lot of you are familiar. This card is actually still legal, I could. I believe I could use this rare candy in a tournament in 2021, which is crazy to think about. However, back then you could rare candy on the first turn of the game. There was no restriction to the Pokemon needing to be down one turn before you rare candied onto it, uh, your stage two, and you could also rare candy from the basic to a stage one. So a lot of crazy interactions back then. Warpoint, the OG escape rope, uh, weakness card, now yeah, take away weakness, pretty self-explanatory from the EX series. And then we have the Ancient Tomb, which um, you don't apply weakness for all Pokemon in play, excluding EXs. So this is how you could sort of control the Gardevoir Wars um, because Gardevoir was weak to Gardevoir itself. And then Magnetic Storm to remove resistance. I believe Metagross and Shift Tree were the Resistant Pokemon, I'm not actually sure. And then Town Volunteers, you shuffled up to five Pokemon and or energy, uh, basic energy back into a deck. So essentially Brock's Grit. And then finally we get to the very beautiful Matrix energies right here. Very, very beautiful. I love these energies. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll use these energies on a tournament. Like I'll just leave them temporarily and bring these energies to a tournament because just, like it's been so long since I looked at them and looking at them right now, they look so cool. So, so cool. All right, so I'm gonna take 10 sleeves, 10 more sleeves, and then we'll combine the two packs that I have right here for our next deck. You can see how like, I've been talking for a long time now and we're only halfway through. So this is gonna be a very long video, especially if I can't open the, the silly sleeves. But yeah, it definitely, definitely takes a while. This is a process, quite the process. And this leaving already took me 20 minutes. So I hope you guys leave a lot of love 
to this video a lot of likes if you're enjoying this if you want to see the rest of my collection i would love to feature it yeah and big thanks to ultimate card for providing me with the product to produce the video and protect my very beloved old pokemon cards yeah. there's a triple acceleration energies aka boost energy these energies were very sought after and i don't know they just look so cool i feel so so cool all right so we are finally done with this one for boost you see the the lightning energy is to power up our magneton and then the psychics and then we have the town volunteers why is the town volunteers here and not with the supporters that is what i'm wondering myself you know i like to keep like i supporters items and then energy very nice the beautiful Dunsparce. This is a German Dunsparce. Back then you could use um, foreign language cards, no problem in your decks. That's why there's Japanese Delcaries. They are actually the OG Delcaries that I used back then. You know, the OG Delcaries that I would use back then. Right, so two decks down, two decks to go. Let's get into it. Now it's time for the first ever Mexican national champion deck. It featured Blades again. I absolutely love the card. Um, so something that a lot of people might not know, when I was younger, I like, or rather, I've always like gravitated towards water Pokemon. I feel like because my favorite color is blue and therefore um, I like the blue Pokemon, which are mostly water. But there was a time where I refused to use anything other than water decks. Yeah, so that is definitely not a good mentality to have. It took me a while to switch to anything different, but when I switched into Blaze again and I utilized this this card and this deck um, to a big degree of success, you know, I never looked back. And that's when I realized that what matters is not the type of Pokemon, right? What matters is, to me, right? Which I'm not saying is the end all be all. What matters to me is winning tournaments. And when I stopped caring about what type of Pokemon I used to win tournaments, and I started caring about the best strategy to win tournaments, I started winning a lot more tournaments. Now this, this was the most sought after and feared card back in the day. This, the level of hate that this Blaziken EX card got, I would argue is equivalent to the level of hate that ADP currently gets. That is how bad people wanted this card banned. That is how bad it dominated tournaments. And yeah, it, it got really bad the hate towards the AM. The, the old, the, that's the OG ADP right there. That is the OG ADP. You wanted to hate on a card, you would hate on Blaziken EX. Now this deck featured a 1-1 line of the Team Aquas Manectric card because its ability allowed you to transfer energy attached to it from the bench to your active Pokemon. So you could use that plus place against Firestarter, you would put the energy here and then you would transfer the energy to be able to attack with Rayquaza EX. This, is a, this concept of discarding energy to do more damage is something that's been always present since the very beginning um, this would be equivalent to the Reshram and Zekrom tag team, right? Dealing more damage for every energy you discard. It's basically the same concept. This had no limit though, whereas Reshram and Zekrom does. Uh, but yeah, and then that card essentially got buffed up and released again as a Rayquaza EX later on. And like that, that Rayquaza instilled fear in your opponents. Uh, usually you only need like two or three energy um, in order to get KOs. And then you saw the Dunsparce right there. So yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. I don't know, like just looking at these decks right now, I'm hitting so much nostalgic feelings, so much like, to me, these are the golden days, you know? To me, these are the golden days of Pokemon. Um, the game was so much smaller back then. The community was so much smaller. There was no Facebook, no Twitter, uh, no Limitless to share your lists. Everything happened on a forum called Pokegym, 
and that's where I made friends who I still talk to today. I still talk to a lot of people I talked to back then. People that I had never met in real life and then I started talking to online and then we met for the first time in Orlando, Florida at the Pokemon World Championships where we all shared a passion you know, for the game. So I don't know, it's definitely some really, really good memories and I'm sure many things that I've forgotten that would be amazing to remember as well. Yeah, but I distinctly remember being at Orlando in Disney, my first time ever in the United States, yeah, which going to the United States from Mexico is a big deal. You need a visa and everything. So it was a pretty big deal. And there's Disney right there, right in Florida. And I simply didn't care. I spent basically all four days or five days or however long inside the hotel having the time of my life. And I traveled with my mom because I was a minor then and she traveled, like we brought along my younger brother who's five years younger. And um, they went to Disney, they went to Universal, they did all these really cool things, right? And I was still the happiest kid on earth just being with my friends that I had talked to for a long time but I was first meeting in person, just playing Pokemon all weekend long. Look at this beautiful card. Look at this absolutely beautiful card. All right. Uh, so I guess I didn't talk too much about the deck, but the idea is you power up with Blaze again, you power up Blaze again EX, and you snipe um, for 100 damage, and Rayquaza EX took care of anything in the active spot. Yeah. Pretty good deck, and like this deck. Yeah, it won me the travel award, it won me money, like this deck definitely, definitely worth the investment. Yeah, definitely worth the investment. And here's the multi-energy, which you could use to cover the lightning and the fire attack cost of Rayquaza EX. And then finally, a single copy of Warp Energy, because it, it was either this or you needed to be... Um, Retreating constantly to power up stuff or have like a something else powered up So the warp energy sending you to the bench when you attached it was like playing an extra switching card, right? Like playing an extra switching card Man, I love these decks Like they they really do hold a special place in my heart right Alrighty the supporters, the copycats. Look at these beautiful copycats. This card once again got reprinted in Celestial Storm. And that's a French um, Blood Ray Quasi X. Yes. All right. Surprisingly, I have like French, German, Italian um, cards, but I don't have any Spanish older cards. And finally, we have the World Champion deck featuring Team Magma Scraton, Team Magma Sangus. This is the deck that doesn't feature that features the least amount of shiny cards. I just I couldn't get the Primal Groudon, I mean the Magma Groudons and the Sangus Hollows, and I just gave up eventually at some point. I feel like I believe everything else is Hollow Reverse Hollow, the non-era correct T reporters, but everything else is foiled out and error correct and there's even Japanese energy right for the Japanese world champion deck these are Japanese matrix energies you can tell by the um, white background and I can tell because by just holding them they feel different quality than the regular ones and then there's this one you know the dark energies the old school dark energies all right so Magnus Groudon was actually a very complicated Pokemon. Its Poke Body was sort of like Latios GXs. If you didn't have enough Team Magma Pokemon in play, you wouldn't be able to attack with it. Um, and then the attacks, linear attack, you sniped for 20, right? Which remember, 20 was a big number back then. And then Pulverize did 50. And if your opponent's Pokemon already had two damage counters, you would do 20 more. Um, a pretty cool thing there and then this didn't run down sparse because it made no sense but team magma sangus was essentially a uh down sparse of the deck that's why there's four and it has the call for family attack you can search for a colorless basic pokemon or any pokemon with team magma in its name which obviously 
they all do in this deck. And then team play allowed you to do 10 damage for every Pokemon with Tick Magma in play with its name. Yeah, yours. So a really nice Pokemon to apply pressure with. Then we have the Claydol, which allowed you to move energy from one Team Magma's Pokemon to another. Yeah, pretty cool card. So there was a lot of synergy between the cards. And this card, at least in the West, it was completely disregarded. Like the whole Magma concept was disregarded as a gimmick. And then the Japanese showed up to the World Championships and literally ran us over, ran the whole world over. Team Magma's camera that allows you to um, get energy from the discard pile. So you would get energy from the discard pile with camera and then you would move it around with the Claydol, which is a pretty cool strategy if I must say so myself. And now we're on to supporters. We have the Erika's Hospitality, if you will. Um, but more importantly, we have Team Magma's Conspirator. This is like Sonia, right? You could search for any combination of basic energy and or Team Magma basic Pokemon and put them into your hand. And I'm gonna need one last opened pack of Katana sleeves right here. All right. Uh, 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 this one doesn't want to open. <laughs> There we go. There we go. I'll probably have two sleeves left over, but that's fine. I'll have an extra pack as well. If you get tennis, I'll definitely use that for when Pokemon restarts in real life. Yeah. I also have an extra boulder as well, which is pretty cool. I might give that away at the next live tournament I go to. And yeah, Team Magma's Conspirator, pretty cool card, but the real, yeah, I'm sure like a lot of you know that the Marchies, Marchies, <laughs> Maxis and Archies cards that allow you to put out uh, any Pokemon from your discard ball with the corresponding type to your bench. Well, that's exactly what this Maxi does. I'll show it in a bit. And then Japanese players really loved Underground Expedition. Everyone in the West completely disregarded that card. We all favor T Reporter and Oracle and stuff, but Japanese players really liked Underground Expedition. I can see why, right? You look at four cards and you choose two, which is a net game of two, right? Whereas Team Reporter, you get to look at only three, and then you discard one. So it's the same net gain of cards, but you actually looked at one less card, right? And the more cards you look at, the more option, the more likely it is that the card that the one card that you do need or the two cards that you do need will be there. So this is the maxi um this is a maxi card which uh says you can search your hand or discard pile for a pokemon with team magma in its name and put it onto your bench treat the new bench pokemon as a basic pokemon and if it is a stage two pokemon you put two damage counters on that pokemon so you could use this to put the clay doll immediately into your into your bench or the camera or if you had discard them you could or they got knocked out you could just bring them back right then you have the Mr. Briny's Compassion, which um, is essentially a Cerola, right? Except you did not uh, need to have any damage on your Pokemon to bring it up. It doesn't work on Pokemon EXs though, but it was a really powerful card with such a strong and powerful basic Pokemon like Team Magma's Graven. Then the Desert Ruins helped you in sniping the big guys, the big EXs. Being a non-EX deck also benefited this because you you would always force your opponent to go through six prizes. Pokemon Catchers, aka, well, Pokemon Reversals, aka Pokemon Catchers of today. Japanese players, we were, my testing team were in sync with them. <laughs> Probably the only ones that played them outside of the Japanese players. And then Team Magma Ball, as you would expect, allows you to search your deck for a Pokemon with Team Magma in this name, but you do flip a coin. If it's heads, you can search for any Team Magma Pokemon. If it's tails, it's only basic, but this deck pretty much plays only basic, so that's pretty okay. And look at this really old school switching card, <laughs> the Porygon 2 switching card, pretty cool. Now we're finally getting to the end of this video. Energy. The very special energy cards, the Matrix Japanese energy. I was very specific in wanting these. I would have loved to have the whole deck in Japanese, honestly, but 
To this day, I still don't know the best place to buy Japanese singles outside of eBay. So if any of you know, definitely let me know. I don't know if there is any Japanese players watching because I feel like if I'm gonna build some area decks and I need to buy them pretty much all from scratch, then it might be cool to buy, like if I'm using a Japanese player stack to have it in Japanese, right? Because I'll know what the cards do, I can just look them up, but then it's like a little bit more representative, you yeah? know? Then finally you have the Magma Energy. This Magma Energy provided two Fighting and Darkness Energy at the same time, right? So you don't have, oops, you don't have the double Rainbow Energy available because you're a basic deck, but this energy works just as well. The one drawback is that it gets discarded at the end of the turn no matter what, but I mean, the important thing was to apply pressure, to take prize cards, whilst you set up and then eventually the camera and the cladle would cover for the energy costs pretty, pretty nicely. Now look at this beautiful holo energy. There weren't any holo energies, like special dark holo energies back then. There wasn't any basic dark energy back then actually. So you were forced to play this if you had to cover for dark energy attack costs. And they also added 10 damage to the damage that you dealt. So these worked really nicely in this deck. You did extra damage with them and they look fantastic. There were there were reverse holo dark energies, but there weren't any holo dark energies like this one. And then finally you have the rainbow energies. Um, these are, these have been working just the same forever. And then this one, I believe was signed by um, the illustrator Takumi. It's signed. Um, I believe like someone loaned this to me at a regional tournament and then eventually like I never ended up giving it back. So if you are watching this video and this is your rainbow energy and you can prove it, uh, contact me and I'll make sure to give it back. All right. Okay. So yeah, we have the four, the 2004 decks, which I absolutely love and adore. If I'm ever, if you ever see me holding a Smart Hive at a future tournament when they are back on and you want to play a game with these older decks, definitely let me know. I will always, always be down to playing older games with these decks. Thank you so much to Ultimate Guard for providing these beautiful sleeves and deck boxes. So now for the finale, of this video, we're, we're going to pack everything up, right? That's that's the next step, the last step. How do I open this? That is the real question right here. There we go. Just like that. To require a little bit of force. And, oh, jeez. <laughs> can't get this out of the plastic. I might end up breaking it. I don't care about the packaging. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna... Wow, even the... even rip these, these things are super sturdy. Even the packaging is sturdy. Like, there we go. That should do it. All right. Let me finish this up. We have the Boulder deck box, really cool um, deck box. Yeah, very sturdy, very like it's plastic, but it's really rough plastic and should protect these decks really, really well. And yeah, the plan is to have this for every single of my uh, collections. I actually have a lot more than four 2019 decks built just because I had so many spur cards. So I might need to find a different method um, to pack those, right? But the next few videos that you'll see 2005, 2006, I'll probably make one of these like monthly um, to show the decks and the different items that I get from Ultimate Card to store my vintage Pokemon collection. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Anyways, here's Blaziken decks. Like, 
this is definitely way going to protect the decks way better than what I had before. Uh, obviously, the Pokemon branded deck boxes look very cool, right, with the artwork, but you know, trying to be cool uh, because barely anyone will take more than two seconds to look at the deck box. But I do want my cards to be as well protected as they can possibly be, right? Because maybe eventually in the future I decide to sell these or I want to keep them forever and I'll have a kit someday and I will play with them, the older cards, the old Pokemon cards that that needs to like. All right. Now my worlds, my 2004 world deck. Last thing we need to pack up. Once again, big thanks to Ultimate Guard for sending me this. I really appreciate it. It's been in the works for a while now. And um, since I have no need for product for tournaments, right? Because there aren't any right now. I figured now would be as good a time as any to start with the sorting and having everything neatly arranged for my collection. So there we go. The four decks. Now we're gonna pack them up into the 2004 archive, smart hive, sorry. One, two, three, and four. There we go. Plenty of space here to place anything else I might need. Or when I get these replaced by the 100 um, boulders or sidewinders, then it'll all be very snug and very nice. Thank you so much, Ultimate Guard. I really appreciate this. And I'll catch you in the next video.